as you sit here with your eyes closed, where do you feel the breathing? You may feel it in lots of places in the body, because the breath isn't just the air coming in and out of the lungs. It's an energy flow. It's part of the breath element that fills the entire body. Your sense of the body sitting here, the whole body from the head down to the feet, has a breath aspect. And part of that breath is the in and out breath. Another part is simply the energy flowing in the nerves, down the blood vessels, out to the pores of the skin. It's all breath. So as you breathe in and out, you have the right to sense it anywhere at all. You can focus either on the spot where the breath seems most prominent, or on the part of the body where it simply seems most natural to focus. Some people find it easiest to focus on the head, other people find it easier to focus on the chest, the neck, or the shoulders. So focus anywhere you like. and allow the spot where you're focusing to have a certain amount of freedom. In other words, you don't want to clamp down on it. Sometimes we have the tendency of trying to sharply define, this is where the in-breath begins, this is where the out-breath begins, this is where the in-breath ends, this is where the out-breath ends. And it places restrictions. Because given that the whole body is a body of breath energy, breath energy doesn't come with clear lines. So when you breathe in, the incoming energy melds with the old energy. It doesn't fight it. It doesn't have to be pushed against anything. It just energizes what's already there. There's no clear line. reaches the point where you feel that you had enough, and the breath goes out. So try not to impose too many preconceived notions on the breath. Just watch how the process feels, and hold that perception in mind that the whole body is breath energy, and the in-breath is simply charging up the breath energy. Then when things feel too charged, you allow the breath to go out. And when it's going to start coming in again, that's its business, but you're there to watch it. And to use the Thai word, a Chan Fu would say, Brakong. Hover around it. Make sure that it feels good. You can pose some questions in the mind. What kind of breathing would feel better right now? Or what kind of breathing would feel best? Which part of the body needs breath energy? And see how the body responds. Just hover around the breath like this. The hovering around, that's directed thought and evaluation. And as long as your hovering can stay with the breath and doesn't hover off to other places. You've got the third factor of the first jhana, which is singleness or preoccupation. The singleness being here that it's the one topic that you're interested in. And as you work with it, it comes more and more to fill the whole body, your whole range of awareness. We're working on a very broad-based state of concentration here. Because as the Buddha says, when a feeling of ease and rapture arises, you try to spread it throughout the whole body. The image he gives is of a bathman or a bathman's apprentice with a pile of bath powder. 
In those days, they would start with the bath powder and then they would mix it with water until you have a lump like dough, and they would use the dough to bathe yourself. So in the same way that you would mix water with flour to make dough. You want to mix it just right so that all the dough gets moistened in the same way. All the flour gets moistened. You don't put so much water in that things begin to dribble out. That's what directed thought and evaluation are for, to help attain a state or a feeling someplace in the body of ease and refreshment, and then allow that ease and refreshment to fill the body. So the whole body feels saturated with that sense of ease and refreshment. It fills everything. Your awareness fills everything. You notice awareness has two aspects. There's focused awareness, and then there's kind of a background awareness in your body. So you want to get the two of those in touch, so that you're excuse me, in touch with that background awareness. It's already filling the body. Actually, there is some breath energy already there in the body. The question is, is it full? You're not trying to pump breath into areas where it's never been before. You're simply allowing everything to connect. And the same with your awareness. You want your focused awareness to connect with your background awareness. So they form a solid whole. Now, as you work with us, you may find after a while that everything is as saturated as you think it can get. Or no matter how much more you try to make it more comfortable, it just doesn't seem to change. So then you can just stay with the breathing as it is. Keep your awareness centered and full. You gain a sense more and more that the breath and the awareness become one. Because after all, they're filling the same place. The awareness fills the body, the breath fills the body. The stronger the sense of oneness, the further and further away the hindrances become. They may nibble at the edges of your awareness here and there, but you really don't have to pay them any attention. You don't have to chase them away. If you chase them away, you drop the breath. So they've got you. So you don't want them to trick you in that way. Whatever thought comes in, just let it go passing by. But the more there's a sense of unity or unification here, the less the hindrances are going to be a problem. That right there is enough to get you solidly based. And from there, the concentration can develop further. You may decide that this sense of rapture refreshment is too gross. That actually becomes an irritant. You'd like something more still. So tune in to the area where there already is stillness in the awareness, where there already is stillness in the breath. And let the rapture do its thing. You don't have to be playing along with it anymore. And you develop a great sense of ease. In the canon, the distinction between these two levels is described in terms of two different images. One is of a lake that's fed by a spring. That's the second jhana. There's a sense of upwelling. There's movement in the water. There's a cool water from the spring spreads to fill the whole lake effortlessly. There's no conscious effort, not as in the image of the bath one, who's consciously working the water through. Here the cool water just naturally spreads throughout the lake. But still there's a spreading, there's a movement. Whereas in the image for the third chan, it's the waters of the lake are now still. The lotus is growing totally in the water, from the tips of the roots up to the tips of the flowers. No movement at all. Just the coolness of the water, saturating them.
as things get more and more connected, even the movement of the breath, even the subtle movement of the breath in and out grows still. The awareness is still, the breath is still. Both fill the body with their stillness. That's when your concentration is really strong. It's not the kind of concentration that blots out other things. It's there. You've got the perception that holds it there. The world outside is still around you, but you don't send your awareness out there. You stay with a sense of stillness in the breath, stillness in the body, stillness in the awareness. It's a great sense of freedom. There's still the work of staying here. You don't want to drop it. But it's not nearly as complex as the earlier stages of concentration. Getting the mind to settle down like this is like a mother chicken trying to gather its chicks together. In the beginning, the chicks are running all over the place, and the mother has to run here and there, but gradually brings them into a smaller and smaller range. To finally, they all settle down together. That's the way it is with concentration. You're not trying to blot out anything. You just maintain your focus. An image they use in Thailand is of a red ant. The red ant just grabs on with its jaws. It doesn't let go. You can move its body, but the jaws stay in place. So all you have to do is hang on to that perception of breath. Hang on to the sensation of breath. And if you do it skillfully in these ways, you settle down. Develop a sense of concentration that's easy to maintain, which is the whole purpose of the practice. If everything is focused just on one point, that concentration can easily be destroyed. But with the whole body awareness like this, with a sense of being settled and established. Your center of gravity is low. The mind isn't easily tipped over. And even as you get up from the meditation, you can maintain that sense of full body as you walk around, as you deal with other things. It may not actually qualify as jhana, but it's, it's a steady foundation. It's your foundation of mindfulness. It's an establishing of mindfulness which, after all, is the, the theme of the meditation. The Buddha would use the word nimitta, and he didn't mean a light, and he didn't mean a, a vision. He meant basically the topic of your meditation. And the topic of your meditation is what? It's the four satipatthana, the body in and of itself, or feelings in and of themselves, mind in and of itself, mental qualities in and of themselves, all of which are right here. It doesn't take much to move from body to feelings or feelings to mind states, or mind states to mental quality. They're very close right here. But you choose one as your foundation. Try to relate everything to the breath. Feelings come and go. and See how they relate to the breath. How did the breath cause them? Which way of breathing helps to induce feelings of ease and rapture? Well, the one the ease and the rapture seem to be gross, which Ways of breathing or conceiving of the breath allow everything to get still in equanimity. What ways of breathing allow you to gain what the Buddha called an enlarged awareness, mahagatang jittang? And the foundations of mindfulness are the frames of reference he talks about, different ways of categorizing the mind. And then as you read through the list, the categories get more and more refined as your concentration gets more and more refined. But what ways of breathing help the mind get more refined? In terms of mental qualities, what ways of breathing 
are associated with the hindrances, what ways of breathing are associated with the factors for awakening. Qualities like mindfulness, the analysis of qualities, which is related to your directed thought and evaluation. Trying to see what's skillful, what's not, induce what's skillful, and let go of what's not. And you keep at that, inducing a sense of rapture and refreshment, calm, concentration and equanimity. These things are all going to be here in the process of the concentration. But you want to hold on to the breath as your main frame of reference, so you don't get scattered. If you find yourself getting scattered, just drop those connections. You just stay with the sensation of the breath. Learn how to read your mind when it's okay for the mind to start questioning these things and when it really needs to just sit down and be still. And stay with the one perception. That acts as a thread keeps the mind right here, sews your awareness together with the body. You're creating a place where insight can arise. It requires a good, solid foundation, a low center of gravity, so it's not easily knocked off. So if you flit around from one frame of reference to another, you miss a lot of things, because in the flitting around there are going to be gaps. And a lot of interesting things happen in the gaps, which you tend to miss. So think of the breath as a long piece of thread that sews everything together over time. Anything that comes up in the body or in the mind, try to relate it to the breath. This is the kind of concentration that can give a good foundation for for insight, for discernment. The stronger this concentration, the, the more refined the discernment you can develop. So don't worry about when to stop doing concentration or when to start doing discernment work. As the Buddha said, it requires a certain amount of tranquility and insight in order to get the mind to settle down. and a strong concentration, that once it's in strong concentration, your tranquility and insight get more refined. All these things go together. You may find yourself leaning in one direction or another at any one time, but don't lean so hard that things fall apart or get scattered. Try to keep everything together like this. can begin to cut through a lot of defilements, a lot of problems, in a way that it couldn't when it was scattered. And John Lee gives the image of having a single drill bit digs down into the earth. Your concentration is here, your mindfulness is here, your insight is here, when they're all working together. The drill bit can go deep, cut through anything. Because all these qualities are working together. 